Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Ice Gamashman here, and welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, Chase the Vision with Ice Gamashman, the show that is all about helping you become a more capable individual through me sharing my experiences and knowledge in business, life, and personal growth. Now, I do have to apologize if I sound particularly stuffy in this episode, or maybe not 100%. It's not that I don't feel good. It's very simply I've been battling some sinuses over the past week, and I'm on the tail end of things. But I was like, hey, I have to put out an episode for this week. And so, guys, today I want to talk to you guys about the hard truth of raising your rates, of raising your prices. But before I jump into today's topic, I would like to remind you of the fee. I'm not here running advertisements and any ad advertisement that I ever run is going to be about my own products or my own services. I just wanna make that clear. And so in order to help the show grow, I always ask that you share this podcast with at least one other person per episode that you listen to. If you listen to this episode, you get value from it. Share it with your business par partner. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Share it with somebody in your life. You go back and listen to episode 94 and episode 93. Share the podcast with two more people. It's super simple. It takes you an extra 30 seconds, but it means the world to me. And I can tell that you guys are doing it because the podcast has been charting in not only Uganda, but Gambia. And I checked today and we are charting in the education chart in the top 200 on Apple Podcasts in Lebanon and the top 50 in self-improvement in Lebanon as well. Hey, isn't that crazy? So as of right now, I checked and I saw that we were charting in five different countries. Next time we have this conversation, who knows, by Friday, it could be six or seven or 50. And that is ultimately the goal of building something great for it to expand, for it to hit new markets and for you to ultimately provide value to that many more people. That's the point of building out your personal brand. And so super grateful for all of you. Now, I want to talk about raising your prices, and this is something that many people fail to do in business whenever they are starting a company or starting a business. They're like, how should I price my business? How, could I, how, how should I price my product? Now, I don't want to spend much time talking about product-based businesses today, including SaaS businesses, very simply because it's an entirely different world. I'm here to talk about service-based businesses. However, many of the same philosophies do apply, but when you have products, you have to look inherently to the value and the competitor space a little bit more than a service-based business. And the cold hard truth, very simply, very frank, is people hold themselves back because of their own limiting beliefs, because of their own confidence issues. They are not confident enough in their own businesses. They're not confident in their own ability to provide a service. They think that the $100 that they're charging per hour right now is the rate that they're going to be working with for the rest of their life. And the one thing that they do not realize and that they fail to realize is that through experience and through doing that service more and more and gaining more experience through study and reading and listening to people who have, you know, the results that they're looking for, they are actually going to be providing two, three, four, five times the amount of value as they previously were. It's a it's a direct correlation. It's a it's a vertical correlation with the amount of experience and time doing something, right? It's natural for your ability to expand and to improve, but they don't feel like they're worth enough. They don't feel like they could charge it. And it's not because they can't, it's because it's out of their comfort zone whenever they're doing that. I think back to the very first call that I ever did and I charged $20 for an hour and then I charged a hundred dollars for four calls and the next thing i know you know i close a client uh you know for a thousand dollars a month and then i'm like okay cool so this means if i'm doing consulting or i'm working with somebody to strategize with their their brands at the time you know it was a very confusing time when i first launched my business i raised that rate to a hundred dollars per call and then 250 dollars per call and then five hundred dollars for a call and then up to fifteen hundred dollars for one simple consultation and then from there continuously scaling and this happened in a very short period of time i would say in in less than five years because i made the decision to continuously 
not only step outside of my comfort zone, but to also look for ways to increase value. Yes, I could get better with time, but this wasn't like I was cutting hair and like I'm a barber to where the more time I spend doing it, it's going to get easier and that I'm going to naturally get better. But it's also pertaining to knowledge and active application of what I am teaching and what I'm consulting on and what I am building, right? Because my business centers around personal branding and how to effectively build out your brand. And then an offshoot of that is how to build out your company's brand or how to publish a book, right? If I'm working with an author or somebody who is an aspiring author. But the thing is, if I never went out of my way to learn about how to publish my own book and then I published my own work, personal branding and manifesto on fame and influence available on my website, by the way, go to isaacmashman.com forward slash book. You see, if, if I'm going to run an advertisement, that's going to be the extent of my ad. But regardless, if I didn't publish that book, how could I work with somebody and help them publish their own? This isn't a matter of, oh, I'm making my money helping you do the same things I did. But it's it's more so the tactical area and getting inside the head of somebody else and, and seeing their vision for what it is and being able to help them do something that could have taken them 10 times the amount of time if they were to have done it themselves. But every single time I did this price raise, I always knew that number one, I would be uncomfortable and it would be very annoying and, and it would make me feel weird whenever I asked for that rate. But then at the other side, I also knew that it was necessary if I wanted to scale. Whenever you're starting out, you're not just going to hop onto the scene and be like $10,000 a call. $10,000 a speaking engagement, you know, you, you're going to start and then scale, but most people fail to do that because they don't think they're worth enough. They don't think that they can, they don't think that they could charge that amount. And they might be too focused on the competitors in the marketplace as well. Oh, well, this person is charging this, this person is charging that. Do you really think celebrity barbers care about what everybody else is charging. No, they're charging the rate that they want to charge because they know the value that they can deliver. They know that their reputation speaks volumes. Their previous clientele speaks volumes. And this is the point of collecting testimonials, not for external people and external use, right? Whenever somebody is going to search up a company, they're going to base their, their buying decision, right? Who they're working with, who they're buying from based off of reviews and testimonials. That's great. Like, I think that that is a cherry on the top and that that's all the more reason for you to collect reviews and testimonials. But I also use testimonials for myself, not for you, the, the prospect, but for me, the business owner, because whenever I have those moments of doubt or whenever the imposter syndrome creeps in or whenever I'm like, wow, like, you know, am, am I worth this rate? I can remind myself of the previous people I've worked with and have seen you know, get results who I've helped to get results in their own lives and their own businesses. They are reminders, right? Seeing two dozen video testimonials of people talking about Mashman Ventures and talking about their experience or, you know, four or five dozen written testimonials. I'm able to look at that and say, this does not happen by, you know, just luck. It, it, it doesn't happen by chance. I had to build this. That means I started somewhere, somewhere and then I scaled. I had my eyes set on a higher target. You know, you could call that a goal. I had my eyes set on a $1,500 goal part, goal post rather, excuse me, when I was going from the $500 to a $1,500. I could also call that a quantum leap. That was a quantum leap going from a $500 consultation to a $1,500 consultation, but I made it because I knew that I could. I knew that I could. I wasn't going to let a confidence issue affect and hold me down. And this is going to apply to you guys as well. If you've done something for so long, if you've done it, you know, and you have the experience, you have the knowledge, you have the testimonials, you have the videos to back up what you're doing, then why wouldn't you raise your rate? This isn't greed, right? This is very simply understanding that you're going to a different class of clientele, you're going and working with different people or the people who really want to work with you and value their own results are going to be willing to pay your rate because you are worth it. Cheap doesn't always mean it's best. Let's be real. I come from a background where, you know, we're going to get the great value can of beans rather than the bushes can of beans because it's 20 cents cheaper or 30 cents cheaper. 
But guess what? The Bush's beans are going to be better. Not all things that are cheaper are going to be worse, but when it comes to services and what you're providing, you shouldn't ever sell your product and sell your services based on being the cheapest. Louis Vuitton, you know, Bernard, Bernard Alnault, right? The, the current, uh, I guess you could call him, he's not so much of the owner, but he's like the chairman of Louis Vuitton. He's gained billions of dollars in the past couple of years in the middle of a freaking pandemic because of the value that Louis Vuitton holds. People know that it is a high quality product. It's a high quality product. Teslas are not the cheapest in the market. Even the Model 3s are more expensive than most Hondas and Hondas. Yet they are worth, you know, billions of dollars. Elon Musk was the richest person in the world. I don't know if he still is, but they're not making their model based around pricing. Now, given there are circumstances where pricing does come into play and that you might lose a client or two by being too expensive. But that shouldn't serve as something to say, hey, I need to lower my rate because one or two people told me it was out of their price range. No, it's it's out of their price range, but it could also be in the price range of somebody else, of somebody else who sees the value that you can deliver upon. The opinions of other people are what what's going to get in your way right about now because you're going to be like, what, is, what, if, what if this person says no? So what? That for every no, there are going to be 10 or even 100 people who say yes. It's not going to be easy. As you increase your rates, you now have a higher expectation placed on the results that you are delivering, right? Don't think that it's just out of... Uh, place of greed of saying let me let me charge more money and make more money so i can buy more nice things no if you are charging fifteen hundred dollars for a service like in my case i knew that i had to deliver and this is why whenever i'm working with somebody i set the expectation extremely high but i set the expectation in my own mind even higher than that i know that i need to do everything in my power to deliver and to provide the best experience possible. From the moment they get on a call to the moment I walk away with them and do a follow-up call or check in or watch their results, I know I need to live up to the price rate that I'm charging. I have gone out of my way over the past year to look for value ads, ways that I could go ahead and increase my value proposition to a client, and this is what you should be doing as well. Whenever you're building out a service-based business, what can you do to add on you know, resources? What resources can you create or provide? What incentives can you throw in there that once you create, it's not going to take any more time out of your life, but it's something that could completely change the lives of another person who now has access to that resource. They're able to listen to that audio or they're able to read that PDF or read that book. That was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to publish Personal Branding and Manifesto on Fame and Influence was to be a value add to the people who are already working with the firm and working with me. Yes, reputation booster. Yes, way to make residual income. Yes, it's something I've always wanted to do, but I also knew that it was going to be a value add that could potentially have infinite returns. There is a parallel correlation with the increase of price with the increase of value. And then there comes a point where the amount of money that you're charging might not be just with the value, but based off of association with you. This is when your reputation comes into play. And this is something that's extremely advanced that I would only share with a client after like three or four or five calls. But there's going to be a point where if you go and take this to a high enough degree, you're going to be able to charge higher rates just because of who you are, just because of the speculation around your name and your reputation, what you've done in the past. Like Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Kim Kardashian, they can charge a million dollars for an Instagram post because there's going to be not necessarily the attention, but the association. And the association is also important, but that's going to be a subject for another time. But the hard truth about raising your pricing and raising your pricing and your rates in business boils down to limiting beliefs and a confidence issue. What ways can you boost your confidence in your business and in yourself? Self-improvement, right? Listening to podcasts where now I'm here validating your thought that, hey, I need to raise my prices. 
Hey, I need to get out of my freaking comfort zone, right? It's super easy to be comfortable with where you're at in your business and charging the current rates. But if you're doing that, how would you expect to scale? Yeah, sure. You could go ahead and go and work with more people and scale that way. Or you could increase your rates, work with more people, provide more value, and you can scale that way. There are so many different ways to scale. And I'm not saying that raising your rates is the best way for you to do that. But I'm saying that this is a way for you to make sure that when, whenever you're doing a call with somebody, you feel like you are being compensated the proper amount. Because I've also been on the other side of things where I feel like I'm not being compensated enough. And that affects how you feel. Right? That affected how I felt, the vibration that I was in, and it made it to where it's like it was almost difficult to want to be on a call or talking to somebody or doing a services, right? done for you services whenever I was back at that point because I'm like, I knew deep in my heart and even on the surface level, honestly, like if anybody were, would, would have asked me that I wasn't charging enough, that what I was doing and the value I was providing is worth 10x what I was paid. But I also knew that I made the commitment to that person and it was my fault that I didn't ask more. It was my fault that I didn't charge what I knew I should have been charging because I was afraid. It was fear. Fear creeps in during the sales process until you do it enough times. And even with application, with timing, you are always going to have that thing in your guts where it's like, man, this is crazy. You know, going and saying, hey, I'm, I'm charging $12,000 or $60,000 for one client when that's what a lot of people get paid for an entire year's worth of work. But that's the point of being in business and being able to provide value to where you're not measuring yourself based off of that same system that everybody else is living in. I'm not saying to get so gassed up in your head to where your head gets large and you're like, wow, I'm, get, I'm better than V and I'm, I'm not like the rest, right? You know, and look, I, I've I've seen it. I've heard it. You know, scam still cooking at McDonald's, right? We downplay the employee lifestyle. Yet in actuality, many intrapreneurs are more successful than entrepreneurs. If you're starting out, you might be a quote business owner, but you're more likely unemployed with a title. And it's up to you to make sure that you step out of that and step into this person that you're becoming into this title that you're associating yourself with. It's up to you to get to that point. But if you don't choose to do something different and to ask for that increase, you're going to be letting fear dictate your life and the direction that you're going. And you're giving away your power. You're giving away your control. And that's not a way to live life. And that's especially not a way to build your business. You could listen to these things but if you don't apply the words that I'm telling you and say on the next call that you do, this is as simple as saying on the, on, on the next call, let's say you have a consultation based business or you're a coach, right? And, and if you're a coach, especially you need to do everything in your power to stand out because it's super easy to put the mantra and the moniker of I'm a coach. I'm a life coach. Okay. Are you, how can you give advice that is solid? What makes you qualified? But let's say, let's run with this and say that you are a coach or a consultant. Are you charging $100 right now per call? Increasing your rates at this current level is as easy as increasing it to $110 next call or $125. If you really want to and you're that confident, go from charging $100 for a consultation to $250. Let's take a second and talk about a uh, you know somebody who could be a barber. Maybe you're charging $15 a haircut. How about you charge $18 instead of 15 next time somebody wants a haircut from you? And then as you go, you look for ways that you can become a better barber and maybe you use a straight razor, right? Now, now make sure you're good at this and you're a professional and that you know the, the safety side of things, but I know that I will be more than willing to pay $30 or $40 to somebody if they use a safety razor on me, you know, or not a safety razor, but one of the, the straight edge razors as a man, because I'm like, man, this, this this makes me feel good, right? So much so that I got a one of the straight razors and I only use a straight razor whenever I'm shaving my face at home. But if I go into a barber shop and they have the gel, the aftershave, the, you know, the, the, the shaving cream, the straight razor, the hot towels that they put around your neck and on your face, or they might even have a massage chair, man, I walk out feeling like a million bucks and I am going to tip 
you know, a good amount of money because, hey, you provided me the experience and this is why you are worth more. Now, your worth doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your personal self-worth as an individual. So don't feel all offended and say, oh, because I'm not charging enough, I'm not worth as much. Like, all right, get this hoorah crap stuff out of my podcast. But what I am here to say is that you go from $15 to just making the change to 18 off the whim, right? So you just, you raise your rates without raising your value, so to speak. But then now you incorporate these other things into your haircutting experience, or if you're, you know, uh, you know, taking care of women's hair, okay, well, what products are you using? You know, are you using better products than, than the next person to where now you can charge a higher rate and make a profit off of the increase in value? and quality of the products you're using in the hair. And then are you more experienced? Do you have a million different testimonials and pictures of previous clients how you can show and display? But just imagine going back to that barber example, you go from $15 to 18 and then you jump up to 30 because you incorporated these other things, you're making twice as much as you were making before just by having a couple value adds. Man, that's wild. Then I don't even need to have a conversation surrounding the gas prices and the inflation rates, right? I've seen so many people complain about gas in the past week and a half. Man, I wanna scream because we're all thinking about the problem and we're saying, oh, the price is going up. And we're not thinking about any solutions and we're not thinking about expansion. We're thinking about contraction. This is typical in any recession cycle. We're not looking to get out of it. We're looking to survive it. How is that? setting you up for any success. It isn't. And so could you imagine for a second, instead of thinking, oh, the prices of gas are going up, let me be in this mode of contraction. Why don't you say, hey, this is the reason for me to go harder with my business, to increase my rates, to match this level of inflation, and to thrive during these difficult times rather than just survive. You have gas that's going up. Okay, cool, increase your rates. Okay, prices of groceries are going up. All right, increase your rates. And then we want to get into the conversation of $15 minimum wages. Basic economics are going to tell you that the price of everything else is also going to increase because people want to make their money. It's capitalism, right? Capitalism is great and there are flaws to the system or not necessarily flaws, but drawbacks to where, hey, these people at the top are able to control how much money they're charging and how much money they want to make. They have targets. They want to grow. These corporations, Apple didn't hit the trillion dollar mark by circumstance. They made the decision to get there. They provided the high quality service. They, you know, charge $1,500 for an iPhone. But guess what? There's a standard that's associated with it, a level of class, a level of prestige, your services don't have to be for everybody. That's another thing that you have to realize. Just because you previously only worked with one level of clientele doesn't mean you can only stay there. Now, I'm not trying to get into this whole elitist kind of conversation, but look, you don't have to be the normal barber who only charges 10 or 15 bucks. You don't have to be like that. You don't have to be the person who works at a normal restaurant and doesn't even get tipped. You could be working at the Ruth's Chris, working at a higher quality restaurant, even if you're not an entrepreneur or in business. This, this expands to people who are employees of companies. The choice is yours. You can make the decision to go somebody somewhere else to increase your value within your own position. And if there is no room to increase your value, then go somewhere else where there is room for growth where you can get compensated what you need. Don't let your ego get in the way of saying, oh, I know I'm worth more. But if you genuinely know you are, get out of your own damn way. Go somewhere else, have another job lined up, have another gig lined up and then quit. Put in your two weeks notice and go somewhere else. And if you can't find a position, find a side hustle, find something else that you can use to supplement your income. If you are into business though, you have full control over everything. And now as an employee, yeah, you have you have full control of your life, but you might not have full control of the prices and the things and the value of the menu, but you do have control over your own situation that extends outside of the workplace. And even internally in the workplace, you can be that person who provides exceptional service and exceptional results and gets noticed.
Or like I said a minute ago, go somewhere else where you can be noticed by the right people. And look, being premier or working in, in, in you know Louis Vuitton worth billions and billions and billions of dollars, they're not for everybody. They're coveted by everybody, but they're not meant for everybody. And that's strategic. Now, would you say that that is unethical or immoral? I don't think that the value and the price has any conscience. I don't. There are certain markets and there are markets that need to be filled. And so whenever I first charged $100 for a consultation, pretty much anybody on social media could afford what I was providing. And then I scaled to $250. And then I realized that I wouldn't be for everybody anymore. Now there is going to be a select group of people that were no longer going to purchase from me or work with me because they're like, wow, I'm not going to pay $250 for this. It's the same reason why they wouldn't pay an extra 20 cents for a can of beans. This goes into the way that you were raised and the mindsets that you were programmed with, the paradigms that you have, right? Your perspectives on life and situations around you. Then I went to $500 and hey, another group of people would no longer work with me. It's not because they couldn't, because money is the issue. It's very simply because mentally they wouldn't know any better. And this is also why self-development is so extremely important because you can have alternative ways of thinking. I can only imagine if I never got involved with network marketing those years ago and went through and you know witnessed the things that I witnessed in the company and just this alternative way of living. And then if I never went and did these dream building experiences and sat in the Rolls Royce you know, in, in Beverly Hills and I was just sitting in the car and I'm like, man, this is nice. This is quality. If I never went and traveled and, and went overseas and went internationally and saw the Eiffel Tower, and if I never went to Miami and you know saw that, hey, I don't have to be struggling. And then I, I was able to increase my vision and increase my perspective on life. And that's what you need to do when it comes to raising your rates. You don't have to be for everybody. Realize that as you scale, you're going to be losing out on other business, but you're opening up your business funnel and opening up your life and what you're doing to a whole nother group of opportunity. Yeah. And then, and then, Hey, if you want to want to work with everybody in some way, shape or form, this is when you go and increase and create products or write a book. I knew that, Hey, there was a large portion of the people who I was connected with on social media and who have been following me. And I'm like, I get that. Not all of you have the aspiration of building your personal brand to a high degree. I understand not, not all of you are going to want to spend X, Y, and Z investing into your personal brand and investing into a PR firm. I get it. I understand it. I understand that, hey, not all of you are even wanting to build a business or build your personal brand at all, but you would love an opportunity to support somebody that is either free, right, for my podcast or for your own podcast. But then I wrote my book realizing that anybody could pay $12.99 for a book. Anybody could pay 25 bucks or 30 bucks for a signed copy. And then in the future, I'll be doing it increasing more and introducing rather not increasing, but introducing more things into my own business model to where more and more people have the opportunity of getting value and working with me in a sense without having to pay that higher degree. But the thing is, I chose to get really good in one specific area of my business before I chose to expand. You're not going to help everybody immediately. And I'm not even helping as many people as I want to or providing services and, and you know streams of revenue to as many markets as I want to because it's a process to get there. Just like it was a process going from 20 bucks to 100 to 250 to 500 to 1500 and on to the next, so on and so forth. And I have to ask you in your business, what can you do right now to increase your value? And is your rate with where it's at right now at a place where you can increase the rate without having to do anything different? Going from $100 to $110, going from $1,000 to $1,100. Think about apartments, right? Whenever somebody buys an apartment or buys a house or buys a property that is producing revenue, they ask themselves prior to buying or purchasing it, can I increase my monthly revenue based off of the lease or the contract or whatnot without having to make any changes, without having to make any renovations? Can I take the rent from 800 to 850? Can I take it from 850 to 1000? Can I take it from 1000 to 1200? How much leeway do I have? 
And then from there, it's not that you're trying to kick people out and you're trying to be greedy. It's very simply, you're growing and scaling a business and the times are changing. You need to change with the times and you need to set your vision as high or as low as you want to take it. And if you don't want to raise your rates and you want to work in one specific field or at one specific market, more power to you. But if you don't want to be in this current situation, you want to get somewhere else, the way that you get there is by doing and applying the things that I'm telling you right now in this episode. Don't let the limiting belief hold you back from doing and taking that next quantum leap in your business and that next quantum leap, leap in your life that you've been wanting to make so badly, but you just haven't had the courage to, you haven't had the confidence to. This is the, the kick on your butt, right? The kick in the ass to get you over the edge and to actually do this thing that you really want to do. And you'll feel better about it too. It's funny that when you increase your rates and whatnot and you get paid more, you're going to be like, man, now I'm being compensated what I know I deserve. I can only imagine doing something for 20 years and getting paid the same rate. And I've talked about this in the past. It's like there's a different um, understanding of, of money. You know, somebody can only provide so much quality of service when it comes to cutting grass. But even then, there is a certain point where you can scale and say, hey, I might not be 20 bucks, you know, to cut your lawn. It might not, might not be $20 to cut your lawn. Whenever I used to cut lawns for people around the neighborhood and when I, when I had like one of my first quote unquote business gigs, I remember cutting lawns for like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. But then if I would to have, if I were to have stuck with that business rather, excuse me, I would have said, well, let me go ahead and do the edging. Let me do the weed whacking. Let me do all of these different things and increasing my service and increasing my value prop to where I would have went from 15 to 150, but then I would have went and said, hey, let me expand and scale to where now I'm doing retail spaces. I'm going to Costco's, I'm going to Sam's Clubs, I'm going to Walmarts, and now I'm making a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks. You know, it's it's all about perspective and it, it's relative to the grandeur of where you wanna go and the, 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 the goals that you have for yourself. It's relative to your goals and to your vision. Go out and do the damn thing. That's all I got to say. I know that this has been a, quite a long episode, but it's something I've been thinking about for so long. And it just hit me today. And I was like, I had to write it down in the notes of my phone, you know, and I'll, I'll read off exactly what I wrote down. And I'm like, this is important. The thing that holds most business people back is their refusal, refusal to get out of their comfort zones and increase their rates. Don't refuse. Accept it. Accept this calling of being in business. And do the things that you deserve. Do this for yourself and do this for your future self as well. If I never increased my rates, I wouldn't be where I'm at today and I would, I would be kicking myself. I'd be like, man, Isaac, I was stupid. I would have ended up leaving the business because I wouldn't have been comfortable only getting paid $100. And I can tell that it is worth the discomfort to be more comfortable charging a higher rate. That discomfort is worth it. You just need to find out for yourself.